The common name is the Texas horn lizard, and we try to reiterate that they are in fact lizards and not toads or frogs. Uh, these guys are reptiles, making them lizards, so we try to reiterate they are Texas horn lizards. I really like how people in Oklahoma love them. I mean, that's just a wonderful story, and it's fun to talk to people about their childhood memories of the lizards. A lot of people don't tend to have an affinity for reptiles, so it's nice that the people of Oklahoma do have that connection with this reptile. So they're about three to four inches. Uh, there's some variability, so some will be a little smaller. Some will be a little bigger. They're not super fast moving. They don't bite. They're not dangerous. They're not venomous. Just before nine o'clock, the lights will automatically kick on and we have UV and heat bulbs in here. So from about 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., the room gradually gets a little warmer in here. And then at 10 a.m. every morning, we have misting systems that goes off. So we make sure that the lizards are hydrated just by having an automatic misting system. And then throughout the day, we'll be spot cleaning cages in here. So making sure that all the enclosures are in good shape. And then through random times throughout the day, we actually feed the lizards. We try not to have a set feeding schedule because we want to implement something similar to what they'd find out in the wild. These are fruit flies that we're going to be feeding today. Before the pandemic, we were feeding a lot more crickets. The crickets were coming from cricket farms. So there are a number of cricket farms in the US and there are also a number of cricket farms in China. And so a lot of people that were traditionally sourcing them from China weren't able to get them. So that led to major buildups in American cricket farms, which is what sort of made it difficult for us. So we had to adjust the diet a little bit of what they were eating. So now it focuses more on fruit flies, which are a little bit easier to source and maintain here. Currently we have 16 lizards in here uh, and we have another 14 eggs in the incubator. All of these eggs uh, that we hatched out were retrieved from Tinker Air Force Base, which is an Air Force installation in Oklahoma City. And since 2003, there has been an actively tracked population uh, on the Air Force Base. Right now she's uh, listening for a signal. So each transmitter has a unique frequency. So. Her uh, receiver is turned into that, that frequency, and when she hears a uh, beep, uh, she'll fix in on that signal. Wherever it's stronger, that's the direction she'll head. And you just work your way. You can triangulate your signals, uh, take a signal at perpendicular angles, and pretty soon you'll be right on top of the woods. This area is about 40 acres, uh, and it bounds uh, the back corner of the base. So we have residential areas on, on the south and the west side. Look that way. Oh, Wait, there, I heard there it. we go. So by that we know it's somewhere that direction. Yeah. So she can take multiple okay. signals now to triangulate down to where that signal is coming from. The zoo started partnering with the staff at Tinker Air Force Base in 2008 and uh, they were just looking for some help with tracking the lizards. It's a 15 hectare plot with a number of gravel running trails essentially, but it's a protected wildlife area right on base. Uh, so it's, it's used as a public park and people can go jogging and uh, ride their bikes through it. Um, but one of the really nice things is that the prairie habitat, so the grassland that's there, is actually protected. What's happened with that one, the lizard has molted, but it shed its skin. You can actually see the skin of the lizard. Hatchlings do that quite a bit. So every couple weeks, uh, they'll shed that, that diode. This is 149.60, says frequency. They appear to be calm. We really don't know if they're calm, but that's their defense mechanism is to basically freeze like a statue. So we just put a drop of silicone uh, regular like RTV silicone, we put a drop down and just push that down on there. We keep the antenna so it's coming to the rear and then we make sure this collar is not too tight, that it's got plenty of flexibility and also nothing will get up under it. At any one time, we may be tracking 10 to 15. Uh, I think we got about 10 or 12 right now we're, we're looking at, but some of those are tracked by radio, some of them are tracked by the radars, harmonic radar, so it's, it's kind of a, a mix right now. And what we have is a study 
It's gone over 17 years and it has the largest database of information on horned lizards that there is in the country. We've monitored that population for a number of years and one of the things that uh, has been noticed is that the population tends to fluctuate quite a bit, so going from well over 100 lizards to down below 50 lizards depending on the year. And so that's part of the impetus for starting this program is to develop what we refer to as a Head Start program, so essentially raising animals here at the zoo past their most vulnerable life stages and then reintroducing them into the wild as either sub-adults or adults when they'll have an easier time to survive. They're real, just an iconic species in, in Oklahoma and Texas. Most common thing I hear is, oh, I used to see them all the time. And people don't see them anymore, so we don't know if that's because people don't get out like they used to when they were kids or whether it's, you know, something that's happened uh, to these guys. And it probably is just they got a lot of things going against them. They're an important part of Oklahoma's natural heritage, obviously, and um, I think every species has intrinsic value. It's valuable just for its biodiversity and it's um, the fact that it exists and it evolved. Um, this species is special, as we talked about, to Oklahoma um, and the people of Oklahoma, so I think that's really important. And just preserving biodiversity in general is really critical. The more life we preserve on the planet, just the healthier the ecosystem is in general, and the better the planet is for us as well as other living things.